Apple II. As, as my brain is completely taken up with retro computers and nothing else, I'm not able to talk about anything else, I'm afraid. So. Uh, okay, let's talk about what you actually do with these computers. Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. So, in a sense, by getting an Apple II, you will be doing more of nothing. Yes. Well, it's... It, partially, to, I've known it's turning 40. My son really, really likes retro stuff. Uh, and and playing the games. And he, on the one hand, he finds them funny because they're so bad. But also actually genuinely enjoys playing them. Um, we played a game... I played a game with my son that I haven't played since school, which I haven't been able to get since school, called Granny's Garden. And we, we played through the whole game. It's a terrible game, but he thought it was hilarious. Do you want to go in the cave? No. Yes, you do. That's the game. <laughs> Guess the tree as well was, was everyone's favourite part of Granny's Garden. Is it tree A2? No, there's not enough magic in that tree. Press spacebar. <laughs> Is it B3? No, there's not enough magic in that tree. And it's random and it's different every time. So, did you ever have an Apple II? No. No, well, we did. We that was a big computer in the US. I, I, I assume you could get it here, but I don't. I don't remember it at all. I think this, the apples in the US were like the Sinclairs here. Right. So, so you this probably is, could get them, but you know. there's there's no nostalgia <laughs> angle to this. It's well, just no. you want an Apple II because <laughs> the collection must grow. <laughs> well, I didn't have an Atari ST. I didn't have an Amiga. I didn't have an. Atari 800, although I really wanted an Atari 800. I think there's something bigger going on here, Kev. I, I, I want all the computers. That, that's, that's what it is. I, I get the sense there's um, there's, a, there's an element of you. You reach 40, you're thinking, what the hell is this all about? Maybe I've done it wrong. I need to go and recreate my youth and change it somehow. Mm. So now you're going through all the computers of your youth to see which ones you should have actually used instead of the Sam Coupe and the Spe Spectrum 1 to 8. Yeah, well, well I mean, there's a lot, probably, that's probably more true than you might think. I mean, obviously, you know, I, I, did, like, I was really into computers at a very early age, and that's pro it's proved very, very useful in later life. <laughs> the fact that I, I learned to program so early, and there's a natural computer programmingness and all that. Um, you know, programming at five, basic program at five, probably doing assembly at ten, probably something like that. Um, people think, "Wow, oh my god!" And it's not actually that impressive because as a child, it's easy to learn. Um, but of course, basically, when I turned thirteen, I discovered music, and that that was the end of that. So computers for me are like a back to childhood thing. But there's there's more to that. I have a recurring dream. Um, and it happens every few years. It's not like a recurring dream every week or something. It's, it's a recurring dream that maybe every two years I'll have this. And it's always about around the outside of Churchill Middle School. Somewhere at the outside of it, like, even if it's at the other end of the field, but never in, in on the field. It's always out, just outside on the path or just by the entrance of the school. Or it's just The dream is just whatever it is, but that's where it is. That's got to mean something, hasn't it? And that's every two years I'll have a dream like that. And that's the that's that time scale, isn't it? It's the same time. That's interesting, isn't it? Is. it? Yeah. yeah. What do you think that is then, Kev? I don't know. What happened in middle school? Um, you messed around. We had a good time. I did quite well academically and all that stuff. You made your own it's magazine cool. called Spring. Yeah. Did you hand drew? We were very creative, didn't we? I mean, we did all sorts of things, didn't we? Didn't you? I'm sure you did something. You. Although maybe your thing was more taking things apart with Vinny. Yeah, that was good fun. You would bring, bring his... his <laughs> come around with his toolkit. <laughs> Televisions. <laughs> <laughs> A housing electrical system. <laughs> That's, and yeah, you would look at all that thing, those things we did. You'd think we were destined for, for greatness, <laughs> wouldn't you? Yeah. And then we were. Well, it was the wrong <laughs> school. It turns out it was the wrong school, Kev. If we'd be going to some kind of... Uh, well, yeah, uh, I suppose. Maybe, maybe the 11 plus should come back. If we'd gone to Arrowvale instead of the Abbey High School, <laughs> maybe that would have been the case. <laughs> well, we went to the shit school for some reason, even though we knew it was the shit school. Didn't think it through. Yeah, that's where everyone else was going, wasn't it? Yeah. 
I mean, I, I, I mean, at that age, I saw education as not a waste of time, but an inconvenience. I know well, it was a, uh, it was much more sinister than that. It was <laughs> it's training, good. training the idiots to to become factory fodder or Confirm. shop fodder, um, and it wasn't really about education and learning stuff. It was it was more about uh, falling into line, wearing uniforms, colouring within the lines. You know, give you these ridiculously simple, asinine tasks yeah. and hold you to account for it. Yeah, why haven't you done it? Don't be creative, stop <laughs> being creative. It's like uh, President Skinner, isn't it? When yeah. he says, oh, I hear a child's being creative, I've got to put a stop to it. Did you really think that at that age? That I did, it? yeah. I, gen I genuinely did. It's very astute for a 11 <laughs> year old, isn't it? We're talking from ages 9 to 12, aren't we? Yeah. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm quite impressed. Yeah. Mm. Obviously, that wasn't. I, there, was, there was a big element of, okay, I don't really want to do this. I'm a bit lazy. Here's a good. Here's a good excuse that sounds convincing for me not to do it. There's definitely a strong element of that. Yes, and that's a, a common thing for adults to do, isn't it? Yeah. So it's lizards, so I don't have to do it. Yeah. But you were. But you were right, though. You didn't say lizards. So <laughs> technically, you're probably, you're probably right. You know. What I didn't see was from the other side, the teachers, the the monotonous grind of teaching people that didn't want to be taught yes. stuff that that's the thing they actually you know ninety percent of the people there would never use. Um, yeah, we were given a huge amount of aspiration, and they must have all knew. You know, <laughs> do that. <laughs> that. <laughs> There's no way you're going to do that. You're going to be in a factory. Yeah. Well, I would, say, I would say we didn't we didn't actually end up there, but technically you did. But you went in, you were in the the office in the factory. Well, I did a bit of factory <laughs> so work as well. Are you, are you okay? Yeah, I did do a bit of factory. Manual degree. Yeah. yeah, but I've been fighting my whole life <laughs> <laughs> to do nothing. <laughs> Not to do nothing, <laughs> but to do something worthwhile. Yes, yes, and we've not succeeded. Practice <laughs> to do something worthwhile. What you've got to do. Is have incredibly wealthy parents, uh, go to the right school, get into Oxford. Um, well, ju just just that last step, actually. It's impossible. Well, no, you don't have to be posh. Your you, brother made it to Cambridge. People, no, okay. He, here's what it is, right? He he can. If you, it's not. I don't think he does it deliberately, but basically, he appears to be middle class. He, when, when you meet him, you think he's middle class, and, he, and that's just. Partially because he moved around, because he was at a later age than me, he didn't pick up the accent as much. So when he went to Cambridge, he picked up a different accent and, and, and that kind of thing. And I, I, I think um, that's that's what it is, actually. So he could... I, I, I mean, I would guess that was a defensive thing for him, because you know, at that age, it was sort of, even at 16, I knew that if you got to Oxford or Cambridge, you were set. Yeah, that, that was, that was the aim. Yeah. It is actually true. Yeah. He's never applied for a job in his life. That's, that's, yeah. that's the not the end point. I, I can imagine once you get there, fitting in with all these spiffs, spivs and swap, and not swats, um, poshos. Toffs. Toffs, that's the word I'm looking for. Well, well I mean... It would be incredibly different, and there would be incredible social pressure there. You would, you would be seen as an outsider. Yes. But I mean, I, I I used to go there. It was it was it's a fantastic time. I remember go, we went we went every weekend. Okay, because my, my parents are very, what's the word? Is it clingy? No, well, clingy maybe not the right word, but uh, hands on parents, <laughs> <laughs> controlling. Okay, yeah, whatever. <laughs> That's a whole other thing we could go into there. Um, and we would go every weekend, and it, it was great. And I, I met people, but his friends, in retrospect, were middle class. I didn't see that then. I, they weren't posh posh though. They weren't toffs. I didn't see the toffs. Um, they were in a separate social circle. These were just people who were clever, you know. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's just opportunity. And obviously, it's the Rimmer. It's the Arnold Rimmer thing. You know, we went to the same school. We had all the same things. We had computers at a very early age. The same. So. <laughs> I've, got, I've got that. I've got no excuse, you know. I, th I think what it is is your expectations of life are embedded into you at a very early age. 
So if you've got um, parents that expect you to go on to become sort of like a middle class professional. Brain surgeon. Then, uh, I mean, that expectation or it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy almost. Well, yeah, but I yeah. don't I don't, think, I don't I, was, I, didn't, I wasn't conscious that was even there. My parents didn't go to university. We were the, just like so many of this generation. We were the first generation of our family to go to university. Um, you know, my, my dad was an electrician. My mum was was a chemist, but actually quit that to be a full time mum, and then later on just worked as a an accountant in Woolworths and that kind of thing. So you know, your mum was a bookkeeper. Yeah, well, I think she was on the tills. And then very quickly they moved her to, to do mathsy things. Oh, so she can cut the books, can't she? Yeah. Uh, it, it was interesting you said your parents are very controlling. Mm. Yeah. And I think my parents were the opposite. Yes, you, you had this, this freedom. <laughs> I was sort of left to my own device, which was great. But it, it also meant that I was, you know, for, for where I came from, I was quite bright. But it meant... I was only bright in the areas I was interested in. If I if I was interested in something, I would you know I'd, I'd get to know it by hook or by crook. A bit like these drummers, you know, self-taught drummers and guitarists and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. It's no. Just just it's a brute force. Yeah. Isn't it? Just do it. Keep doing it until it sounds good. I never had the discipline of, of someone saying to me, "No, you're doing your homework. You're gonna sit down. You're gonna do it now." Um, and and that's the end of it. Yeah. I should stress. I never had that either. Uh, and in that sense, I'm really good parents in that they were very hands-on and, and et cetera, et cetera, and give you lifts to places and all that stuff. But there was never a pressure to do work. But if the pressure came never. from school, if it was like... The pressure came from school, yeah. yeah. Kev's not doing his homework. You need to make sure Kev's doing his homework. Would they have done it? No. No. I th- and that would have been... That was me. Mum had similar attitudes to you, actually. Um, in the... Well, why should you have to do it? Colouring in, what was the time? <laughs> I mean, I used, I used to maths, say... Just maths. I used to say to my mum and dad, the reason I didn't do my homework is, they're teachers, they're paid, that's their job, to teach us within the hours we're at school what we need to know. And if, if we're going home and having to do homework, it's because they haven't done their job properly. So I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, do, I do have a memory of spending a lot of time in the dining room Chatting to my brother and he was doing something and, and I was messing around. Um, and in the, in the years later I realised, well, yeah, he was doing his homework. There was loads of paper <laughs> on the desk, you know. And I don't remember that happening the other way around where I was there doing the homework. <laughs> so there might be a thing there, possibly. Yeah, yeah. hated homework, me. We're, we're, we're basically failures. We see what sells as failures. And actually we're not. We're done all right, basically. It's just... How you perceive it's that it's that perception thing the thing yeah. of talking about social media won't we that, where, although I certainly don't use social media in that way where people can you know comparing myself to other people I, I find that thing ridiculous and I mess around on Facebook but uh, or maybe I, I just let go of the comparing myself to other people thing at an earlier time and everyone's different we've done all right we've both done different things and it's cool actually I think our expect- my expectations were ridiculously high at an early age. But as soon as I let go of that, I just aimed for a thing and, and I got there and that, that's it. Finished now. Now I'm just playing with my own computers. I think my percent, I can't, and you know, I've got to stop going on about class really because I think the show's <laughs> getting a little bit like. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, really, we, we mean posh posh. Yeah. We mean higher than that. But Sarah knows posh posh people. Oh, right. Toffs. Well, actual I would toffs. say proper toffs, yeah. But wouldn't they have the word toffs and it mean someone else? Would it mean Possibly. Near royalty? Possibly. Uh, <laughs> I think someone who used to go over Prince Harry went to her school. Oh, my God. What was her okay. name? Okay, okay, okay. She's quite famous, actually. I think she's been on telly recently. But, I mean, Sarah, I mean, uh, she makes the point, you know, that the only reason she ended up going to prep school and boys because her fa- uh, parents were teachers there. Right. Yeah. Uh, um, which okay is fair enough, but it means to her sort of little clique of friends. Oh, I've got to know a little bit, you know, yeah. not not great, and they're all really, really nice people. But you know, you you oh, look yeah, at them. Opportunity think, that we didn't stop for. <laughs> it's not that. It's we're just, really, really joking. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that they're they're normal people. Yeah. When you talk to them, they're yeah. normal. They don't. They're not. Yeah. <laughs> mega perceptive you know they're not highly analytical looking at things and and you they're, know, they're not nerds they're not what you expect yeah. 
successful people to be sometimes. They're actually just normal, normal people, yeah. And you think, well, what's the difference, yeah, between the people I know who are normal people and the people Sarah knows who are normal people? Apart Opportunity. From, apart from their income bracket, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like, it's like, and you think, oh, it, it can't, it, you know. I think you've got to sort of. We, we, I mean, come on. I mean, are we uh, can we really say neither of us are lazy? I cannot say with honestly that I'm not really, really lazy. I think one of the greatest myths of the 21st and 20th century is that people aren't lazy, they all get up and go and want to go to work and do this and do that. It's bullshit, yeah? Most people are lazy. If you, if you give someone the opportunity to have a day off, They're, yeah, they think that's the best thing in, in the, the world. world yeah, they'll go to home and do nothing. There are people who are workaholics, yeah? Mm. And they, I mean... I, I personally think that's uh, conditioning. It's a sort of yeah, it is a it. habit yeah. that you well, get into. Phil, Phil Collins on yeah. topic, on topic. Phil Collins uh, doesn't doesn't it, well it, certainly in the <laughs> in the band he joined, but he, he had whatever came from his family of ex, of, of, of something conditioned to him of, of don't stop, don't ever stop. Tony Iommi as well. He, he got from his parents basically. You keep going. You just keep going. All the band have left. Just get random people in, <laughs> just carry on, and the band goes down. <laughs> I've got to be honest, I mean, I keep looking over there at your bookshelf, and there's a, the book called Donut Economics, but I just saw Donuts. Mm, donuts. <laughs> so as you point out, that is a great book. All right. I recommend everyone read that book. I, I recommend Donuts. <laughs> Crispy Graham. Don't know too many that bloody hell. Yeah. Definitely read Day, Donut Economics by Kay Rawworth. I, I was given um, a present, a, a gift um, from some people, and I won't go. I can't tell you the details, but um, they gave me. Well, they were the the Muslims, and they bought me some alcohol actually. But they said, "Oh, you just keep that covered up. Don't say what that is. It's a bottle." I thought, oh yeah, yeah. What get it got the bottle out. It's Carlsberg. Because <laughs> they don't know. They don't know what it is. You know, they won't know. They just bought what oh, alcohol. You know, and uh, also gulab jam. It's, it's got slightly different names from different people, but it is the most unhealthy thing in the world. Indian sweets, right? Gulab jam, it's donut balls soaked in syrup. And when I say soaked, I mean yeah. dripping. I'm soaked. sure they sell those um, Milan sweets, aren't they? Yes, they do, yeah. 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 Don't bother. Oh, I've never looked Because you'll die. Just, just look at them, I think. It's a, if you're given a pack of them, it's a party thing. You put them out as party and maybe have one. <laughs> Don't have any more than that. Mm. That's interesting conversation. Yeah, I hope we've said the thing we meant to say. Something, something. Oh, do you know what I did? Didn't press play and record on the uh, sound recorder. <laughs> uh, Tales from Punch Bowl. This is the third one. We've done three albums. Uh, 1996, seven, ten, something. Have a look. 95? Wow. It's all earlier than I thought. Uh, there's certainly a couple of years since the last one because obviously they reached the point where it, they were. You think at that time, that, at that time, if you're big, you are so exposed. You are, your time is taken up. You know, uh, touring is just a bit of it. You know, you've got to go on TV and all this crap, haven't you? I mean, good grief. Imagine. Um, this is the after they are famous album. So this this is they've they've done their difficult third album. Uh, they've done the end of touring horrible festivals and everyone knows who they are. Oh yeah, Primus, that's Primus, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And then they're part of the furniture. They've had stuff thrown at them at festivals, etc. Um, I definitely prefer the previous one, but I'm not sure if that's a real thing or not. Uh, I, I I sense. A slight push for commerciality, but it's, I don't know if it's even really there. It, it might just be me. I really don't, really don't know. I mean, it still sounds like Primus, really. There's, there's, I'm going to talk about this difference, and it's that much, because this is really a continuation, really. Uh, maybe, kind of sags a bit in the middle. 13 songs, yeah, 90s syndrome. I don't know how long the, the album actually is. But maybe, yeah, there's a couple of things. Uh, there's kind of a groove 
longer song. It's not the actual track lengths aren't that long, but there's this kind of a groove thing that maybe wasn't there before, where it's do do ka bow do do ka bow you know, and it just keeps going and keeps going, that, that kind of thing, which is good to dance to at a festival, you know, um, and a, a good thing, but a slightly different thing, and for me, I get a bit bored, maybe. It's really minor. <laughs> It's a really good album. Still sounds like 1980s King Crimson to me. Uh, maybe a bit of 90sness in that groove thing. Maybe. Mm. Oh, Kev, you've said absolutely everything that I could possibly want to say. End of re- end of review. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the, it doesn't seem as as there seems an element of seriousness about it, which is a bit, bit yeah, a bit strange. The, the comedy positive aspect of it I'm happy it was cool um, and there seems to be more it sounds serious I don't know whether it actually is yeah uh, I'm trying to think of uh, Southbound Pachyderm yes yeah something like that I love yeah. we're known as Big Brown Beaver yeah and me but we'll talk about that later yeah um, on the tweak again yeah so there's a lot of stuff on there I, I mean you have got the crazy stuff like uh uh, where's the animal one? Space animals or something like Space Farm. You know, that's that's just yeah. stupid. Yeah. yeah. And and we like that. Professor's Nutbus's House of Treats, um, mm. the opening one. It starts as you think, okay, yeah, this yeah, is going to... Sounds like Primus. Yeah, it sounds like Primus. Yeah. But it's, you know... Um, it's got everything there, but it sort of it feels a little bit like, oh, no, we've actually got to make music now. We're proper musicians. Yes, <laughs> you know, there's sort of a little, mm. and that's the thing. I, I don't know whether maybe the uh, the groove thing is is almost padding. It's as well, we can make songs that way. That's quite easy. <laughs> okay, a bit slow. That's five minutes now. Um, and they just keep going and then just soloing a bit, and you know. Um, but that's a style, and it's and it's something people will like. So you know. But that, like I said, is there a commerciality to it? And you say it's serious. There's an. I would call that the nineties-ness. I don't even know if it's really there. The, in that, the, people will take it very seriously. You know, they'll they'll listen to uh, Alice in Chains and things like that, and take it all very seriously and get really angry if people <laughs> talk about them at all, other than this is the best album in the world. Um, but is that just me? You know. Uh, I just prefer the previous one. Yeah, I mean, pork, pork soda is brilliant. It's a brilliant army. What are you going to do after that? Yeah. Uh, the, the, the the aggression. That's what you could call it. Aggression, nineties thing. It kind of comes from Rage Against the Machine, maybe. Maybe it's just that the, the, those that that influenced are take themselves too seriously, maybe. Whereas obviously, Promise doesn't. But there's a thing in there, and it's kind of annoying. Yeah, <laughs> angry. Yeah, um, shut up. <laughs> teen, teen angst. <laughs> was that there before? Maybe it was there before. I, d- I just don't know. Maybe it's just my summery mood. It's summer now, so stop it. I don't think. I think there has been a a change, and the motivations for it are. Oh no, we're a band. Pink Floyd syndrome, isn't it? Yeah. What, so we we're, really we're, have to do this. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to do other stuff now. Yeah. It's like the um, when you have an idea for a, a good book or something like that, and you write all the ideas and all these great ideas, and then you think, oh, I've actually got. To, you know, you start writing it, and you think, yeah, this is gonna be. Great. And then you actually get into nitty gritty of writing a narrative down, and yeah, you're like, it's boring. Oh, it's not, <laughs> this it's is, fun to this just do the fun. first bit. That's yeah. It. yeah. Well, I've got to keep doing albums now. Yeah. And that means more touring, more TV crap, <laughs> more MTV video spending thousands on a music video instead of something important. Because that's what you had to do in the 90s. It sucks. Um, uh, the drummer left after this album. I don't know if that's significant, um, which is a real sticky issue for a band like this. Who whole, the, the whole sound of the band has developed from touring, hasn't it? It's all about that sound of the band, so you lose your drummer. You've got to get a different drummer, so it's going to be different, isn't it? It wasn't like after that they did South Park, though. They did the South Park music, and that puts it into a perspective. All you realise the start of South Park is after this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 1995, 
There wasn't no South Park in 1995. That's unbelievable. Yeah. And again, South Park is now part of the furniture, and I'm sure they've gone through the same... In fact, you can you can almost tell that they've gone through the same thing, that they've got, they sort of sagged and then came back up again. Yeah, they, they've talked about that, actually. Yeah. That's Stone Trail they, Park. They really stress. They, put, they think they're putting out the worst South Park episode <laughs> ever. They've ruined South Park, and it's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's even better than they've ever been. Even the, 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 the they were so distraught that I think Trey Parker tried to stop them putting out the, uh, the, the the Warcraft episode. Oh, God. He thought it was a disaster. That was amazing. It's, it's just amazing. <laughs> it's just the best thing ever. Um, I mean, and, and, yeah, well, South Park is brilliant. Yeah, that's another different thing. <laughs> Sorry, I've done it. Um, you mentioned Southbound Packy Dem, didn't you? Yeah, that, yeah it's, that, it's got that groove and it's kind of boring. Oh, we're actually six minutes twenty-one. Yeah, but I mean, then the space farm is after it, and that's lots of fun. It's just loads of noises. Yeah. Um, Hellbound seventeen and a half theme from, which is a fantastic title. Uh, but again, it's it's a groove and it's a bit boring. But then after that, you've got Glass Sandwich, which is fantastic. You know, um, I don't know. Are they treading a line there? And they know they've got filler, but they also know bands that have done filler, so they know how to hide it <laughs> better. Whereas you know, traditionally penultimate track or centre of the album sagging you know they know all about that so they've tried to that one and then that one and then you know uh, oh. or it's just a different style and people like that and we happen to let, like it less there's nothing on here I don't like I should stress this is all yeah minor. it's a good it's really good yeah uh, I mean you know over the electric grapevine that's penultimate track but obviously the last track on Primus albums tends to be a coda city thing uh, that's kind of the same thing, but for some reason that's just awesome. It's, yeah. it's amazing drumming on that one. Yeah. It's very, very busy. Uh, yeah, why is Big Brown Beaver? Uh, are we going to do the joke? We're not going to do the No, no. Would you like. No. <laughs> We're not doing the joke. Uh, the answer is yes, now, but not then. That's the answer. That's the correct answer. Anyway. Um, sorry. Uh, if we'd only heard this album, sorry, if we'd only heard these three albums, I would have said, hmm, that's, they've done it now. Because it's, it's also around, it's, it's carrying on, and it's still good, but you get the sense that's it now. But I, I've heard other albums, and no, actually that's not the case. They're too famous at this point. I think that's a thing, you know. Um, But yeah, I don't even know if those complaints are really there. I bet there's people this is their favourite uh, Promise album. I yeah. bet there is. Uh, cool, it sucks. Yeah, it's really bad. It's terrible. <laughs> it looks like it's done on an Atari ST. <laughs> uh, rubbish. <laughs> no, it's not stylized. It looks like it's. It looks like a printout. Doesn't it? it it's even the quality of the. <laughs> And, yeah, but the idea of having uh, Playmobil figures, that could have done something really good with that. Yeah. Maybe that was the original suggestion. Then, then, because it was the nineties, they had to turn it into some bollocks. Just, just a, a Playmobil little set of, of Primus on stage. Perfect. That would have been fantastic. So done that, but you couldn't really do that then. You could probably nearly do it in the eighties and not in the nineties, but you could do it now. Pumpkin, that's better. Like a pumpkin, no, it's actually a Playmobil face, but it's a pumpkin. Yeah. Four eggs. Yeah, four eggs. It's kind of a disappointing, you know. They, I mean, actually, for the third album to get like above four eggs, it's got to be something fairly spectacular, hasn't it? Yes, it's because it's the third album's in yeah. for us. I mean, remember, Mr. Bungle, people got quite upset when we. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's all their albums. Yeah, and and we sh we could have done them in a different order. We could have done three, one, two, I suppose. But <clears throat> mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but yeah, we you got to we got to show a journey. Usually we do consecutive albums, and it makes sense to do that the main run. Uh, but had I, ch I wouldn't have chosen this album. There's other albums I would have chosen actually. Whereas obviously Pork Soda would have definitely been there. Probably selling the Caesar Cheese as well. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, yeah, a great suggestion, Primus. I, I really think, enjoyed this run. Yeah, I mean, yeah, great, great band, definitely recommended uh, for proggy people. I saw a review that said 
it's it's high energy prog rock. They try to hide it, but now we know. <laughs> um, and it's really good, and you should you should listen to Promise. Yes, yeah, yes, you should. definitely. Mm. Uh, yeah, so uh, I think we'll we'll go back to Jethro Tull next week. Should we do that? Yeah, yeah. let's do that. That's exciting. Mm. See you next week. You know, I said the other day uh, we should try and do a um, Derek and Clive thing. Mm. Maybe we should try and do a Derek and Clive thing about democracy. <laughs> you know that democracy? Do you know what really pisses me off, Kev? Democracy. Democracy. All those yeah. bastards voting all the time. They've Out- always got to have a vote on something, don't they? Outnumbered by the bastards. <laughs> Why can't I leave things as they are? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we won't be able to do it without putting on ridiculous little oh, no. uh, you think Derek and Clive you're automatically into uh, it's got to be a bit Cockney <laughs> bit Cockney like a bit of Cockney you know um, obviously year, this is years ago isn't it we did our Diamond Dogs review Diamond Dogs the, the best thing about it was that we did this ridiculous Stones impression and we can't do a Stones impression the Stones Stones. Stones. Rock bones. Um, Rock bones. And uh, we just thought it was funny, and I think because it's like the Stones, the Stones, man. Um, but I, I wonder if Darren Locke, it turns out he started much the same time we did, but we were, we were unaware of each other for years. Maybe he saw that and thought we were taking the piss out of him. I don't know. It's possible. Mm, or maybe I, someone I, I doubt that. We were, well, I don't know. We I weren't even aware of him. I doubt that. I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay then. Don't worry. <laughs> I can't do it anymore, Kev. Okay, don't worry. Well, I I found uh, uh, Went and Investigates movie. Yeah. Um. And you were really fat. I didn't realise. So honestly, you 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 you're, you're so much healthier looking now. Still. Yeah. No, I uh. I need to lose. I'll tell you what I looked at. There's a football league that um, fatties can go to <laughs> <laughs> where you, you play football and you get points for losing weight. I thought, no, nah, that'd be pretty cool. I'll do that. I get to play football again. I haven't played football in years. And uh, the, the main barrier to football is everyone's so much fitter than you. So That's what <laughs> it's yeah. really hard work football. Well, rugby's a better one, isn't it? Because you, you can sort of knock people and it's yeah. better if you're a bit more well built. Uh, the, the only issue is it's on a sort of like Friday night. And Sarah, uh, uh, next year, I think she's going to work in three and eight Friday nights. Cause she does nights. No, no, it'd be uh, two and eight. So she does nights and she does like a long weekend mm-hmm. so she's on long weekend now so I'll be kind of I, there'll be a couple of weeks I won't be able to go I don't know if because uh, she's pop, here no because she's not here why can't you go oh dog yeah yeah dog dog problem dog problem can't you take Bob into your, your parents yeah but the things up there mum and dad are there it takes me half an hour to well oh, yeah. to, to get to mum and dad what's that be an hour yeah it's an, an hour half an hour an hour yeah. An hour. Half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it's sort of like. But I thought, no, that'd be cool if I could do that. I might ring them up anyway and just say, look, is it is it would have been massive issue if if I had to l- l- lose a couple of weeks. Like, I mean, people go on holiday, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. You know. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. The, the, let's leave that in the archives. I went to okay. investigate. Cool. Uh, the, the other thing that I've completely forgotten about at the end we thought of actually making it into an actual video and we did a, an ending where you went downstairs to get something out of the, the, the vending machine and came back and I'd been turned into a, a box monster <laughs> and I got a box on over me and I just sort of walked walk into it and, over. and then the bit that's supposed to cut out of that I think right at the very end where you're now in the box and you're just walking into a filing cabinet <laughs> it's really strange. <laughs> we should do more stuff like that. That'd be quite cool. <laughs> I mean, that, you, I mean, we we could have quite easily done a, a, a ghost investigates video on YouTube. Um, 
We weren't doing YouTube then, though. No, it was we were trying to do podcasts, weren't we? Yeah. So why did we film it? Well, that's the thing, isn't it? I don't know where we thought it was going to go. We didn't think of YouTube. I don't know why. Because now, obviously, there's, there's the, the, the those terrible ghost investigators programs. Yeah. Are on TV. There's a YouTube one. And obviously, because it's a YouTube one, it's much better. You've got a genuine skeptic and someone who believes in ghosts doing it, and that's very entertaining and quite funny because nothing happens. The, you know, the, 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 the minimum bullshitting, generally it's all real. The only thing that's bullshitting, they've got a machine that it cycles through frequencies really fast. It goes so fast that it couldn't possibly pick up a voice unless it's a ghost talking. <laughs> so, you know, they say, is Steve there? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it's obviously bullshit. And the, obviously the, the, the skeptic guy says, yeah, I really hate this. I really hate this. And it's obviously what he's saying. This is bollocks. <laughs> Do they have to do that a bit, I think? You got no, that's that's the problem. Whereas we would have done an out and out drama, really. it would have been fake. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember the uh, we did one, didn't we? Where there was uh, it was it was for the podcast. It was an audio thing, and it was the guy who was a skeptic, and there was a haunted house, and he was going to go and debunk it, and it was <laughs> actually haunted. Yeah, but he's such so skeptic. There's a real ghost happening. And he's like, oh, it's very effective. And then he ends up in hell at the end. And he's like, oh, this pain is very very convincing. <laughs> it's not convinced until the end. We still got that anywhere. We must have it somewhere. It'll be, it'll be on CD. I spent hours editing that. I think trying to find sound effects to put it in so it sounded right. <laughs> that was the problem with that. Was it? It was a lot, awful lot of work. And it just yeah. wasn't good enough. It was funny for us. Yeah. There was no way it was good enough to put on the internet. Nowhere near. Uh, well, well, I mean, well, if I put this on, um, we did put on one of the podcasts once when we missed a week. And if you've heard that, you'll know why. It's just not good enough. You know, the process is there. But I think... what it, there, it's just not good enough. No, I think what it is, is we needed a production team. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we, were just, we didn't have time. No, it's just stupid, isn't it? And you try and produce anything of any quality, then you are running into time issues on your own. Yeah. That's, that's why we can do this. But we can't do uh, a technical computer one we can't do a games one we did do a politics one but we realised even the politics one the problem is you have to have inserts of different pictures you can't just film yourselves the great thing about this is we can just film ourselves minimum editing minimum time takes about two hours to put together done finished and that's all the time we've got it's a shame really isn't it yeah because there's loads of stuff we could do I mean, you, you say that, it, it reminds me actually, I've decided I'm going to, um, I'm going to do the Java certification. Right. So I've been programming Java for quite a few years, yeah, and uh, I don't know what, you know, I'm, I'm sort of... Should be quite straightforward, I think. Wow, well, that's, that's, that, that's the point, this is one the point I'm going to make, yeah. So you have to sort of, there's, there's various levels, yeah, and you have to start at the beginning, so I thought, okay, I'll get the books for the first two levels, and I'll do the first one quite quickly, and then go on to the second one which is the java professional and what you're doing is you're going back to the beginning the very very basics yeah and this is the stuff we learn or i learned at university yeah yeah year two at university and it's sort of like you read through a chapter yeah 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 i understand that. there's there's a few things i didn't know like, like you can have um initialization blocks in java which i never knew it's just blocks of code randomly in the class which initialize variables it's like um constructor no it's pretty it goes in was it in, in it with underscores no no it's just a block you put two curly braces and in it inside oh, it you initialize initialize variables with no heading no heading and you can do it static as well you put static curly brace and you initialize variables in there I don't know. <laughs> and the reason we don't know that is because if i mean i've looked at hundreds of java examples on the internet i've never ever seen that <laughs> Now, I don't know whether that was actually told, and it sort of rings rings bells with Groovy. I think Groovy does it uh, that way. Um, well, surely that, which just the compiler is attaching that to the constructor. All it, yeah, all it does is it inserts it after the super in the constructor, so it gets uh, done before the constructor. Oh. Okay, so, you know, there's a couple of things in there I'm picking, oh, no, I don't think I ever knew that. Mm-hmm. But you read this chapter of stuff that you're quite familiar with, and then you come to the questions at the end, and you're like, uh, hang on. And it's really sort of like nitpicky, fine detail over the semantics of the language. And because you've spent years programming a certain way, you tend to like 
post increment and pre um, pre increment plus plus you yeah. know yeah. pre or post sort of thing. Well, most people just choose one way and, and stick with it, and yeah. most people choose post increment sort of oh. thing. But then he starts asking you questions about pre increment. You're like, mm. yeah. Anyway, yeah. so I thought a great way of learning this would be to actually blog it up as as I'm going through it, and then do a video and do a, a sort of like a little video course, Java one one hundred and one. Yeah. 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 It won't be hard to make a good one because the standards on YouTube are so <laughs> it, bad. Here's the thing. I opened, it's so boring. I opened up a new project. I thought, okay, I'll, I'll keep notes and I'll start panning it out. As soon as I decided to do that, my progress rate just, just fell off the floor. You know, you, you can spend an hour thinking about how to do a simple sort of like assignment example, you know, and all the things. And it just, it, honestly, the amount of preparation you have to do to do a decent sort of like anything decent simple course is is sort of ridiculous there's, there's answers to that and I know what you mean if you ever the first time you have to teach a lesson that's yeah it, for fuck's sake it's going to take forever <laughs> one lesson. but there's some sort of technique and it you, do, you haven't got to think about it, right I've got to they've got to understand that you've got to include everything of that thing you've got to have it yeah, no you don't have to have everything they've just got to understand the concept that's it there it is. Do you understand it? Just squish it and break it down into tiny, tiny, tiny bits. And in the end, you can do it very quickly. I don't know whether that's... I don't know, maybe you need to have years of doing it to do that. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. But yeah, things take time. Maybe we should just do a chat podcast, Kev, like oh, they said right. in the comments. Yeah, and we yeah, just, no just talk crap. It's pretty, yeah, yeah. Kevin Sam. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my last Kevin Sam. That was right. Yeah. I last Kevin Sam. Alias, I last Kevin Sam. Yeah. Oh, new Patreon. Patreon.com slash Wenton King. Yeah. Notifications. We've had a couple of people give us some more some money to uh, do some more cool stuff. It's brilliant and slightly baffling. Thank you very much. It's yeah. Really, genuinely, you know, it, it, it we're. Um, Really are happy. Happy. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So it's Simeon Soul, thank you very much, and Mark. Mark could be one of I if that's a billion the, people. I wonder if that's the guy I, who made me the uh, floppy disk emulator. It might be. I hope it is. That's very cool. Mm, cool. Mm. Lovely. Yeah. Thanks very much. We've got yeah. some stuff to release on uh, Patreon, actually, haven't we? Yeah, we've got a, a Supper's Ready live commentary. Um, we need some feedback, really, I think. Tell us what you think we should do for the commentary. Don't tell us lists of bands. Uh, we've got that. What I mean is, what should, what's, you know, premium content for the, for, um, for the Patreon. Is commentary a good thing? Uh, you know, we can just do like we did with Genesis. We can finish Genesis. You know, we can, we can do Wind of Wuthering, etc., <laughs> um, what, what what do you think? I don't know. Or finish off Jethro Tull. I mean, we're thinking. I think we're going to do at least three more Jethro Tulls because they're on the requests on the Patreon. So we're doing them in the main video. Um, but maybe for Patreon we could finish the catalogue because it's all it's all good, sort of, pretty much. <laughs> There's nothing horrible. It's not like yes. I mean, if we had to finish yes, it would be painful. If we had to finish Davy Bowie, it would be painful. And if we had to finish Davy Bowie. Sam will be suicidal. <laughs> but tall, actually, maybe, maybe. But tell us, yeah, if you've got an idea, what, what's the bit, what should we do for pr premium content, Patreon stuff? Hmm. Yes. <laughs> and. Go there if you want. We can do a voiceover thing. We've just been given tip off that there's been some major activity in a factory on the Brook Street Industrial Estate. We're heading there now. It's like an old abandoned fairground. Well, it's not abandoned. No. <laughs> it's haunted by real people. <laughs> Here we are. It's like I'll get the job of getting coats. I'll tell you what, I'll put it on night vision, see if anything happens on the way to the coke machine. Spooky coke machine. I think there's only coke in there. No, 
it's down this way somewhere. See the zero. Oh. 